Every once in a while, I get a crazy lead on something I just have to follow up on. And a couple of days ago, Alex, my weapons expert, called to tell me he's got something I'm going to love lined up across the pond. So I hopped on a plane, and I'm here in London. Rick, meet the finers. Um, Peter's the father. Rolly and Red also work with him, much like I work with my father. And in fact, Peter and my father have been friends for about 40 years. So I've known this family a long time. From the looks of it, you definitely have some incredible stuff here. If you follow through into our back room, some of the rarest pieces we have in our back room. So that's where you keep the good stuff? <laughs> the better stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow me. All right. The business is a family business which was started um, over 50 years ago by my father. Essentially, we deal in arms and armor from Roman and Greek times um, all the way through to the 19th century. We were excited when Alex called. We were very happy to, to see them. We certainly knew we had some pieces which um, might interest them. Oh, so this is where the real fancy stuff is at. A lot of the pieces here have um, fascinating provenance, some of which is royal. One of the pieces I'd like to show you guys is this pair of pistols here by John Christie. That is some crazy work. Made in Scottish style by a Scot, but made actually in his own private workshop in the Tower of London. George III commissioned John Christie to come down from Scotland to make dress pistols and such like for diplomatic gifts. You'd never fire anything like that. No, they weren't really designed to fire. They were designed to look good out of in basically informal wear, right? Although they were completely functional. Sure. No maker would ever make a pair of pistols, you know, unless they were purely mm -hmm. functional. Interestingly, they have a proof mark just here, which is actually the private Tower of London proof mark, which was mostly done for royal pieces. Okay. What are they made out of them? I'm assuming steel barrels. They're, what is this they're all steel, and then these are gilt brass stocks. Very unusual, very, very rare. They have a wonderful, grotesque face on the, on the butt of the pistols there. And all of this, is, how is all of this work done? Is this it is engraved? all engraved, chiseled and engraved, yeah. Can I pick one up? Yeah, sure. It makes you feel royal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just amazing. And the style of these pistols is traditionally Scottish. It's purely Scottish. You don't find all steel pistols anywhere else, really, in the world. That is pretty incredible. What's that one right there, the ivory one? It's not ivory, no, that's staghorn. So this is um, made in 1600, and it's made for the Saxon court in Germany. It's one of only a few that have ever come onto the art market. This is a walnut stock that's inlaid with staghorn, and then the decoration is dogs and grotesque faces, chasing rabbits and so on. So that, that's a wheel lock? This is a wheel lock, about 1600 in date, yeah. And wheel locks typically are quite a bit bigger. They are. That's probably a, a half scale. So the, the purpose of making it smaller was probably for a boy or probably a Probably for a boy, yeah. Hey, check this thing out. It's beautiful. What's really interesting about the mechanism is you wind it, and this is a tightly wound spring that starts, once you let it go, it starts to spin, and there's a little door here. That door opens up and creates sparks. So the wheel's spinning, the pyrite's touching down on it, it goes and all the sparks come up, which lights the priming powder, which fires the gun. Extremely complicated. I incredibly complicated. How many did you say? Three? I no? believe only three have ever come onto the art market. Yeah. So how much is the wheel lock? The wheel lock's 140,000 pounds. Okay. Um, I think I'll pass on this one, but how much are these? They're 100,000 pounds. 100,000 pounds? Yeah. And they tick all the boxes. They have a great name, or, you know, great maker, great condition. And, and they're beautiful, they're works of art. So would you take 80,000 pounds for them? No, Rick, I wouldn't, wouldn't take 80,000 pounds, but I would take 90,000 pounds for them. <sighs> would you take 85,000? That's like $105,000 American. I'll take 85,000 pounds, you have a deal. All right, all right. <laughs> just bought those. <laughs> well, yeah, I bought them. You just bought those. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're fantastic. I'm thrilled. Well, thanks for bringing me here. They're absolutely amazing. Appreciate the business. Sweet. Thanks a lot. Cheers. All right. I shouldn't be in here any longer. I might buy something else. I might want to stay, though. <laughs> <laughs>